Thanks for listening to the Adam and Dr. Drew Show on Podcast One. Have you heard all of the above with Norman Lear? So far, Norman's had conversations with Amy Poehler, Gerard Carmichael, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Charles Barkley, Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin, Stephen Tobolowsky, Martin Sheen, and last week it was Kevin Bacon. When they say action, I, I don't want to feel like it's it's Kevin. I want to feel like it's, you know, in this case, Vic. And don't forget to check out this week's episode with America Ferrara. When I speak out and speak politically, I don't think of myself as speaking as an artist. I think of myself as speaking as a, as a person, as a citizen, as a woman. All of the above with Norman Lear. New episodes every Monday on the podcast. Podcast One app or subscribe on Apple Podcasts or PodcastOne.com. Recorded live at Corolla One Studios with Adam Corolla and board certified physician and addiction medicine specialist, Dr. Drew Pinsky. You're listening to The Adam and Dr. Drew Show. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on a choice. We've got a mandate. Get on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Stone Friend. Thanks for all you do for us. How you doing, Drew? I'm good. Uh, let's see. We did our Kathy thing I wanted to talk about. Oh, yeah. Calls. Uh, uh, say good day. I got good Philly cheesesteak in studio. Yeah, he's a little distracted. <laughs> he's laying down now, I think. He, he? He, with his move, he likes to p- get up on me and then slide my stool backwards. Yeah, so you literally can't control that when that happens. Because it, it, like like, it looks like you're volitionally pushing it back. It's so natural. Yeah. Now he's taking a little rest. This is a weird guy. He, he has... He, uh, he has a witching hour, which is usually about 8 p.m., and he also knows I'm the guy to come mess with. So he comes mess messes with me, and he just barks in my face like as loud at as night? he can. If I'm sitting at my computer about 8 o'clock, 7.30, 8 o'clock, he comes over. He gets up on me, puts his paws on me, starts sort of smacking me with his paw, and then he just barks it, right in funny my how face my, as loud as he can. Our dog does that, too, and, and it's funny how some dogs are sort of vocal. Yeah, it, it, this, our new dog, our, you know, our young dog is that. Our older dog's not a peep ever. Well, the thing that's interesting is Phil pretty much only barks at me. He doesn't. <laughs> if somebody knocks on the door, he doesn't bark, and mm. he doesn't bark at squirrels in the backyard. But he comes to me, and he wants to tussle. Oh, he, he wants this he wants is, to get the going. Play thing. He wants me to come after him. He wants he wants me to chase What's he him. Doing? He's doing a whole perimeter check. Here. He's just doing a. I got him. <laughs> what, I, I got him. I got him trained to sniff out uh, drugs and backyard fruit, man. So, uh, all right. So, so, so yeah. uh, because you called our French tile guy Laveau during the filming of the Adam and Friends Build Stuff mm-hmm. episode, uh, I watched two episodes of Hogan's, Her- Hogan's Heroes last night. Mm. And uh, I kept saying, there's Laveau. There's Laveau. That's there's Laveau. Laveau. So, there's, yeah. But, but it was her motivated. She motivated the viewer. It was not me going to watch Hogan's Heroes. Hold on. It was very her, strange. Hold on. She motivated? She picked it and was watching it. I'm Wait like, a minute. I'm confused now. You have the, your, your French tile guy. You you mentioned Lebeau. She, I call him Lebeau. And she, I, I'm not sure if she went to watch oh, Hogan's Heroes because. Hold on. You keep saying she. It, it's, Susan, were you talking about Susan. your wife? Yeah. Okay, I didn't. I somehow missed the wife part. Well, she she was there when you mentioned Lebeau. Yeah, I could, get didn't it. Didn't quite but, understand it. Didn't oh, she quite, didn't get the reference. She didn't really get it. And, okay. and so I was kept saying Hogan's Heroes. Hogan's Heroes. Now here's Hogan's Hold on, Heroes. Chick not getting a joke. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's got to be a first. Go but, ahead. But he, a couple couple observations about Hogan's Heroes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ken, what's the guy's name? Ken, uh, the guy that plays Hogan. Ken Barry, is that his name? No, no, Ken, no. Uh, I'll get to. The, I'll, I'll he was a whack job, right? He had really, Washington. No, no. no, no. no. No, I'll I'll, I'll think. Of it. Not he, Ken. It's not Ken. No, Ken Barry is from. Oh yeah, F-troop. I know. Right. <laughs> <It's> sad. <laughs> Ask me who the vice president is. I don't know. Can we don't do looking keep, for? Is it still what's Biden? the character's name? Th- theme song F Troop. Hogan. Theme song. Oh, I know. Oh, hold on a second. Hi, all right. Th- it, it scares me that Bob can't. Crane. Bob, Bob Crane. Crane. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Bob Crane was what else you do right. He was the one. Well, Bob Crane is is an interesting guy because Bob Crane it's quickly after you. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Bob Crane was a, a radio DJ in Los Angeles. Oh, I didn't know that. He was a, a, a he was started off as a, a pretty big radio guy in Los Angeles. Huh. Then he became a a Disney movie guy. Oh. He was a Disney Used to crank out a lot of live action, like the goose that laid the million dollar eggs, or my Shaggy Da, and my, well, my also dad. Also, a lot the, of uh, wilderness sort of videos. Well, they did. Uh, yeah, they of, did. They did, well, they did like Swiss Family Robinson yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah. But they cranked out a lot of. Um, 
uh, Kurt Russell was a star in Disney yeah. movies from back in the 60s and maybe even the 70s. So they had these. See, Disney cranked out this like live action comedy sort of stuff with these group of like familiar faces, but they're mostly familiar because it was there. Di- you saw the last Disney film where the guy played the dad, whatever. And, uh, they, Oh, they had, uh, they had the, uh, they had the world's greatest athlete, Jan Michael Vincent. They had Gus, the, the mule that, that kicked field goals. Remember that? I do. Good. Best scene in every bad sports movie it, it when a weird. dog or a mule is playing. They're like, the ref runs to the sideline because the other coach is complaining. <laughs> and they go, you show me in the you show me in the r- rule book where it says a donkey can't kick field goals. It's like, well, of course it doesn't say a donkey because then it would have to say an ostrich. <laughs> <laughs> have to pick every animal on Noah's Ark. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> they was just thinking when they can't find in the in the yearbook in the rule book where it says uh, a giraffe can't play center field, then they go, oh, it's, I, "My hands are tied, coach." And the and the ref runs to the other side. But but the the strange thing to me is how Disney just doubled down on this crap. I don't understand. How, it wasn't until Michael Eisner arrived that they just right. turned. So they would crank around. this stuff out. So Bob Crane was that guy. Now we're talking about Kathy Griffin last show. Mm. Well. Bob Crane also had a addiction to pornography and beyond. Be, beyond, beyond, right? I mean, beyond, probably just a little piece of the story. He needed it. And it was back when the stuff wasn't readily available. Right. I mean, you had to work. You couldn't just pop open your computer. Like he had weird dens he would maintain. Uh, so, I, so there was speak. a lot of stuff going on. But so here you are on this over-the-top sitcom. And here you are, the star of Disney movies. Yeah. And you have this bizarre, dark, sort of macabre, pornographic. And this is back before, you know, people, porn, who cares? Yeah, Everyone's yeah. done a little, looked on Pornhub or done a little porn in their day or whatever. No, this was a big deal. And so he's living this sort of life of, hey, I'm, I'm, it's like Bill Cosby. Like, hey, I'm everyone's dad. I'm the greatest dad. And he's playing dad in all these Disney movies. And then course it starts to leak out he marries his co-star in hogan's heroes like the blonde like olga or whatever the, uh, they, the, the what, uh, secretary for clink right yeah. right the hot blonde <laughs> oh, of course geez. he marries her and then leaves his wife and and the people start finding out about this you know the little stories about the porn addiction and the pictures and the stuff and of course disney's like hey man <laughs> Uh, you know, we'd like to do another movie with you, but we're Disney and uh, Fraulein Helga. That's right. <laughs> Is that the way character? Off, way off with Olga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh... Yeah. Hilda, Helga, Hilda. All right, the point is this. Going, this stuff is going back to the 60s. Disney, you know, now CNN is saying to Kathy Griffin, huh, huh. But they're saying to Bob Crane, eh, we can't do another one of those wacky G-rated daddy movies with this sort of weird porn obsession thing in the tabloids. Yeah. You know, we're not we're not putting you on the poster of our movie when everyone's going to think about porn yeah. when they see you. So that kind of ended that. And he was then just sort of doing dinner theater in, in Arizona. Is, is that after Hogan's Heroes or what, what brought him back for Hogan's Heroes? I think the Hogan's Heroes came to an end, and I think as Hogan's Heroes came to an end, the whole pornography, he had the rap out there that this guy's kind of poison. You know, like, you don't want to hire Bob Crane to be in your movie or to be in your sitcom or whatever. There's all this weird stories about him and porno and sex dungeons and weird parties and watching and stuff like today that'd be sort of like nothing (laughs) i think it's drew carey's uh it's called (laughs) called thursday for drew carey but not only that you'd be like hey man you're reading sex negative leave him alone yeah yeah so it was a big deal and so he had to work and so he was doing like dinner theater in phoenix and he was, you know, after the show, getting the chicks to come back with him to his room and with his buddy and filming him, filming him having sex yeah. and filming his buddy having sex. And it just that was wild back then. Like, like, oh, I mean, like otherworldly. Yeah. Yeah. And now uh, and then, you know, his buddy killed him, basically. Oh, really? Yeah. He was murdered. I thought he committed suicide. 
Drew, what don't you know about everything? He was bludgeoned to death okay. very famously huh. with like a, like a piece of equipment, like tripod or whatever, and then like choked with like a lamp cord and left in his, in his room. And it's as part of one of these bizarre parties or? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I probably, well, I mean, if the, it is part of the party, no, I mean, I'd like to see bad, the invitation. You know I, mean? <laughs> I mean, it sounds like drugs and alcohol. No, yeah, that's it, why he, he had... He had this sort of AV expert partner guy. Mm. It's all in a, in a movie. They did a movie. I know that. Yeah. yeah. He had this AV expert partner oh. guy. And this guy would say, I can get you. Sony has a new Betamax. You know, mm. we can use. We, we don't have to develop the film anymore. We can do it on a tape. Mm-hmm. You know, we can watch it later that night. And of course, no matter the, the real star in in Hollywood is your AV guy. It's not it's not Brad Pitt. It's Brad Pitt's AV guy because he, he's trying to show films at his house and have movie night and stuff. And the speakers don't work. And I got to get the AV guy. That's who the real star of Hollywood is, the AV guy. And so Bob Crane is like, you can get I can get this. I can get that. I can get the early production one of this. I got this. You know, it's the size of a piece of Samsonite. But that was considered miniature, you know, back then. They didn't have to have a truck filled with equipment, and he could film all this stuff. And it appeared that this guy sort of kept wanting more. More involvement? or More involvement, maybe... Maybe that he was attracted to Bob Crane as well. There may have been some weird, you know, sort of bisexual stuff going on. Oh, I see. It's the relationship. Uh, there may be... I, I, you know, and, and then it was one of these things where I think Bob Crane was sort of like, uh, this guy's pretty dark and pretty nuts. And, uh, each time I'm with a chick, I feel somebody's hand on my balls and it's him, you know? And I think, uh, I think Bob was just like, I I think I got to get a little distance from this guy. And of course these guys are always the same guy, which is where are you going? Oh no, you're not going anywhere. And Everyone now. This is before DNA and forensic this and that. All, every arrow in the world pointed to this guy. But back then, it was like, "Hey, man, unless there was a third person who witnessed this, uh, it's his word against the dead guy's word." And this guy just sort of went free, and they never found the killer. By the way, when you when you never find the killer, it means it's the first guy. It's like. Right. It's, it's, of course, it's, the first guy declares he's going to find it. Of, of I'm going to co- find that killer. Of course, it's OJ because we've never <laughs> found there's if it wasn't OJ, there'd be somebody else. And that sounds insane. Right. Yes. So they never found the killer. This guy went free. And years later, like maybe 25, 30 years later, they found some they were able now DNA caught up and they were able to do some DNA or whatever. They were able to link him. I think he actually got sentenced and got, and went oh. to, and he did go to prison and oh. then like died immediately in prison. Oh. So it wasn't that satisfying. Gary, I don't know what the story is. Gary's saying no. He was, tr- at first they investigated, they, they were investigating. This guy became a person of interest. They found his rental car. He had like come into Phoenix from out of town. They discovered him through some videotape, found his rental car, had blood smears in it. Mm. They tried to test it. The, uh, Scottsdale uh, Police Department did not have a homicide division at the time because it was a very small police department. Quaint, and right? Yeah. They basically found this guy's car with a bunch of blood but decided there wasn't enough evidence. So they <laughs> didn't file charges. Wow. Then like f- five years, five to ten years later, something like that, they... Why do you know all this? I'm just reading about it. Okay, reading. Okay, read. That's good. what I do. I want to make sure. That's I want to make all sure all it's this. not something that's... <laughs> He's 31. Me. Of course he knows that's all of this stuff. Saying. That's it's what weird. the kid's doing. I'm he's a huge Hogan Heroes go fan. Go he's got a fucking computer in front of me. Yeah, right, I understand, but he's not reading it while he's doing it. But go ahead. Well, he go wish ahead. He's it. good. Okay. okay, go ahead. Um, then uh, a few years... <laughs> Just checking. Why do you know? Okay. A few years later, they developed, They had some more uh, advanced technology, and they uh, elected to arrest and try him. Mm. Uh, at the trial, he was acquitted and maintained his innocence until four years later when he died. So okay. he never. All he right, may never. have been in jail while he was being tried, but he was never convicted right. or sent to prison. Let's talk about cars for the crime. True uh, okay. car. And true he never car. And posthumously was whatever or something. This that- says here. The, the, this is what I was reading at the very end in November. November 2016, the Maricopa County uh, Attorney's Office permitted Phoenix 
television reporter John Hook to submit the blood samples from 78 uh, for retesting using a more advanced DNA technique. And this is the line I was trying to figure out. Two sequences were identified, one from an unknown male and the other too degraded to reach a conclusion. And that's the end of the article. Oh, so it, so it doesn't, does not point towards him. It points towards a male. But an unknown male doesn't match him. Hmm. Interesting. Well, so. uh, the way I uh, heard it, at least. Uh, now, so do we think this? We think he did it, or well, whatever. It seems like everyone thinks that he did it, but right. the never, evidence never does not suggest. But he was able to raise the enough. Evidence does not suggest. Well, maybe I'm not sure if everything. What what Gary just said, I'm not totally sure how to interpret that. But anyway, right. true car, true car. They can help you buy used or new, right? There are over 700,000 pre-owned vehicles available from the over 13,000 True Car certified dealers nationwide. You can be like Max Spad and get yourself a used car. And these days, these pre-owned vehicles, I, I, I almost wonder why you buy new cars anymore. But I'm just saying. I guess, you know, I guess it's, I don't know. But True Car has used as well as new. So whether you're looking to buy new or used, you get that upfront pricing. You'll see what other people pay for the car you want. You'll learn about that car. You'll learn what the market is bearing in your vicinity. You'll learn what a fair price is. You'll lock in that fair price and connect with a local True Car certified dealer. And the price you lock in is for actual inventory, and you will enjoy a quick, easy buy experience. The price is for an actual car on the True Car certified dealer's lot. You also can get discounts off the list price you cannot get anywhere else. And overall, a better buying experience. Remember, scattergram information, True Car. Discounts off the list price you can't get anywhere else, and it's locked in for a vehicle on the True Car Certified Dealer's lot. So when you're ready to buy new or used, don't forget, pre-owned, go to True Car. Some features not available in all states. All right. Line, let's line talk. Four. He's uh, too late. I'm talking. He's going to hold forever. All right. Let's talk to line four. Uh, Jesus He's just going to hold forever. Though. Josh, 30, Newport yep. Beach. Yeah. Hey. Drew's yeah, thought hey, on hey, medication. Oh, what the hell is that? It's a new medicine. Yeah. It, What's it called? It's, uh, Zelgans. it's called Zelgans. So I have like full blown alopecia areata universalis. So, like I don't have any hair anywhere in my body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this. It's a good thing these days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this medication, I guess, was originally used to treat rheumatoid uh, arthritis. And now they're looking at it's been pretty successful for treating some cases of alopecia. Yeah. Uh, when I talked to my doctor, you know, he seemed pretty excited about it. But when I did a little bit of research online, it just kind of looked like um, like you're basically trying to take care of a mouse problem with an atom bomb. Like it it's shuts a, it's, down part yeah. of your immune system. It's pretty. It's so a pretty I, intense medicine. I mean, I mean, I, I I sort of think of it as something that's used in real resistant, active rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, yeah. And. Yeah, I mean, it would probably work. It makes sense to me to work. But you gotta for remember, hair. For, for inf- immune attack on your hair follicles. Oh, all right. Say. Hey, Josh, <clears throat> do, you yeah. have, do you have eyebrows? I do not. He no. has nothing, no, no hair anywhere. No, I get it. But so yeah. the thing, I'm, I'm really breaking this down because of this fucking horrible society we've created where everyone is like shaving their taint and stuff <laughs> and guys are completely hairless and that's yeah. the way they like yeah. it kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, this was a big deal. You didn't want to be bald in the 70s and oh. you didn't want to have, oh, you, you know, they'd say, puts hair on your chest. Yeah. So that guy's a man. He's got hair on his chest. Now, now you're penalized for hair. I, I'm thinking like eyebrows are a concern. Yeah, oh yeah. But yeah, I, they are. Eyelashes. But 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 eyelashes are a concern. Yeah. But your back, yeah. your shoulders, your upper arms, your chest, not that's anymore. not Doesn't anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah. So and being bald not anymore. So it's really to me right. just about eyebrows and eye, eyelashes. How's the eyelashes going? Uh not good. So the eyelashes I can't get to grow at all. What I have been doing for the eyebrows is getting uh, interlesional steroid injections. So Jeez, going in like geez. every couple months. All right, yeah, okay. and then I'll usually I usually get eight to ten injections at a time. Does it oh. work? Wow. Uh, it kind of works, but not really. Like it, it's really weird. Actually, being out in the sunlight helps quite a bit. So in the hmm. summertime, it's much more effective. Do the do they? Uh, and then, what can't they do? You know, do hair transplants? I could be a donor, by the no. way, for the brow. No, why not the well, brow? It attacks the hair follicles. So, so you, you won't accept, it won't accept anything. Yeah. Yeah. It won't stay, yeah. yeah. 
I'm almost thinking yeah. about like a Merkin kind of a thing. You know what I mean? Like, like, like in uh, Last Man on Earth, where uh, Bill Hader's wearing those wearing those Merkins on his eyebrows. I didn't know, did not know that. <laughs> but when I, I honestly like, I feel like we're good enough today to do like a toupee, like yeah, a like something a thing aesthetic. Yeah, you probably could. I think. You I, could. Yeah, I mean, I don't honestly. I'm fine with being bald. I don't care yeah, about I, that. It's more about the eyebrows and the eyelashes. I I, I agree. Too much success with uh-huh. that. So, so listen. So you ask about the Zelljet. So it, it yeah. is a medicine that has been there been concerns about it. it actually did not get approval in the european union because of these concerns the rest of the world okay. has it um I, here's what i would do if i were you uh the department of dermatology at yale school of medicine is sort of the ground zero for alopecia totalis which is what you have and they have uh-huh. a bunch of protocols going or i don't know about a bunch of protocols they've got a, a whole big group of patients that they're studying and having good effect with, apparently. they I read some publications about a year or two ago that looked very encouraging on this. I would touch base with them, see what they're doing, have your doctors touch base with them, and, and the, make sure you're getting the state of the art. It sounds like they're what they're doing is a little bit – it's aggressive, but it's not necessarily the state of the art. So, so check in with Department of Dermatology, Yale School of Medicine. Sandra, 56, Monterey. Hi, how are you guys? Good. Good. I was just wondering if you ever um, thought about Sonny being, maybe taking after your father as far as being kind of just a flatliner and oh, not really Jesus. moving the needle and wow, like mm. an old cat or something. Wow, kind of. Cat. Every time you say something like that, it kind of makes him think, well, he's taking after his grandpa. Yeah, um, he's got a little of that in him. He has a, he has, well, I... I will say this. The thing that I think separates my dad and and my mom to some degree from Sonny is Sonny has things he's interested in and things he's not interested in. And he's not interested in what his hair looks like. Mm. There's no interest in it. It's a waste of his time. He's he's not getting the needle. It's not getting laid. He's 10 years old. He doesn't (laughs) care for that. So, you know, I I told him this morning, hey, we're getting you a haircut. And he's like, well. Okay, or not. It doesn't. That's a yeah, waste of my time. <laughs> it does yeah, not. Natalia care. takes so much after her grandmother, as far as Lynette's mother. That you guys oh, have mentioned. Oh yeah, so it's a little scary. Family. Really? Yeah. I don't see that. Well, no, but but no. Lin- Lin- Lynette's mom was a whirling dervish. Yeah. And Lynette's mom would just kind of go, you know, just hear her on the other end of the house, and she'd just go like. Woo! <laughs> you know, woo! But then she'd like go, woo! Thank you, God! You know, woo! And Natalia, you will hear her just scream on the other side of the house, woo! woo! Like, and then also, like I, I was watching, I was watching Natalia devour a chicken leg, yeah. And she's like pulling the cartilage off the end and sucking the marrow oh. out and pulling every part. You like the skin and the gristle and and everything. Max Pato eats shrimp tails for fucking like a manatee over there. He's nodding furiously, but I was just staring at her and I was going, "What the hell?" Like eight year old is like fisting this this chicken bone and like breaking off all the stuff you don't want. Yeah. She's breaking it off and devouring it. And I thought, "Oh, this, oh my grandma." That's my grandma used to do grandma. that. My grandmother, oh. I remember she'd be like, the gristle, the marrow, like the skin, that's the best part. And everyone oh. would be sitting around the table kind of going, mm, I like the meat under yeah. the thing yeah. and the neck, but I'm not eating the end of that Ugh. weird end of the Ugh. chicken bone off. Natalia, it's seven, devouring it. Wow. And I'm like, I think that's my grandma. I think mm-hmm. she's got my grandma going over there. I don't know where this comes. You know, Sonny wants nothing to do. You know, he wants a chicken tender. You what was your grandma's she, ethnicity again? I don't know. <laughs> nobody she wouldn't nobody checked. Guess. Nothing. Just sort of English, Irishy, Western kinda. European. Sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just white. But anyway, it sounds like such a Bohemian, you know, Eastern, Northern European thing. I don't. I don't. No one knows what anyone was. But we did find out she was a daughter of the Revolution. Yeah, uh, we found that out. We need but, to do a, like an ancestry thing on him. Somebody did spit, it on get you know get it and they can spit in the thing. And I have no, it. I have zero interest in this. I have zero interest in it. It all falls on. I know. I bet you, Sonny would have no interest in it either. Yeah, but wouldn't it be interesting if you know, no, if Jimmy, Jimmy you out. know what Jimmy Kimmel said to me, and this made me interested. Yeah, he said you should do one of those ancestry things. And again, Sonny and me, and I'll explain my dad in a second. It doesn't make any difference to me. It's not 
whatever I'm doing, I'm doing. It's yeah. from this day forward. It, it, yeah, when yeah. I hear people talk about, you know, I, I, I just I don't like it when black leaders talk about the slavery all the time. It's like, OK, that happened. Now, what's going on tomorrow? Please, let's focus on what's going on. Yeah, but you can't deny this happened. I, no, no one's denying it happened. We're looking for what's going on tomorrow. Yeah, but you got to look. You got to look at the future. You want to look forward. I'm like, no, you don't. Just let's talk about what we're going to do tomorrow. No, no, can't deny this. It's like, okay. By the way, that is the path to a fucking cinder block wall, whether it's an individual or a whole society. That is a path to zero success. And you can make all the fucking faces you want, Drew, but why no, is it I'm... 2017? Everyone's going, what's going on in the black community? It's not helping. It's, well, it's not for any community. How about the Armenians and the way they worry about the, the genocide? It it is. They it, moved on. They've been all right. It. Thank you, Drew. I'm just saying. I always like when you do that. This. Was the push? That's why I made the they, push. No, the Armenians. Look. Can I say this? I'm just saying. Can I? No, you're not. Because I'm going to fucking shut you down in right. a second. Please do. Uh, Mark Garagos is passionate about the Armenian genocide. Yeah. But he never cites it as a reason why the Armenians aren't doing better in this country. Okay. You understand the difference there? Yeah. If the Armenians said, because of the genocide, we can't flourish here, of course our test scores are lower. What about the genocide? And if they did, you would tell them that's not beneficial to you in 2017, living in Glendale, California. Understand it. Accept it. Do whatever you have to do once a year to commemorate it. Or have a parade or a march or whatever. Or get a plaque. And now it's time to go to work. That's the difference. I'm glad you brought that up and shot yourself in the foot. Okay. Uh, my dad, the difference between Sonny and my dad is my dad doesn't have anything that flips his cookie. I mean, he likes a little jazz and he likes pontificating, but he doesn't really. Sonny doesn't care about his hair and doesn't care about what his dress is and doesn't care about a million and one things. School's probably uh, half of that. But he does care about the NBA, and he does care about the NFL, and he does care about many things that he enjoys. And he likes humor. He right. likes he 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 likes going with me to the car races. You know, he has things. Whereas my my dad is truly just a flatliner. That's that's the difference. And I'm the same way. I've no interest in many things. Yeah. No matter how much people want to get me into Walking Dead or Game of Thrones or whatever. Call of Duty, whatever video game, zero, zero, but insanely interested in three piece uh, BBS wheels. <laughs> Drew likes my obsession with wheels, uh, and I am very interested in protecting my identity with Life Lock, man. Mm. There's an email phishing scam that targeted one million users of a document editing application. Sheesh. The inv is the invite uh, to open a document looked like it came from a known contact. So a lot of people fell prey to this ruse, this grift, and they opened it. And the files scammers collected their information, including all their contacts. Identity theft, America's fastest growing crime. That is why I have LifeLock. Lynette has LifeLock. The kids have LifeLock, and uh, Philly cheesesteak down there somewhere. I think we got him signed up as well. LifeLock scans hundreds of millions of transactions each second. If they detect your info, they send you an alert. It's that simple. If there's a problem, their U.S.-based agents will work to fix it. They're out here. They're U.S.-based. They don't outsource. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions, all business, but LifeLock it's the best, and it starts at just nine ninety nine a month. Drew, go to lifelock dot com or call one eight hundred lifelock. Use the promo code Adam. That is Adam for ten percent off your lifelock ultimate plus membership. Visit lifelock dot com and save ten percent now. All right, improv coming up Thursday, June fifteenth. Dennis Prager up on stage. Irvine Improv. Everyone loves that those shows. We'll hang out afterward and say hi. Go to adamcroll.com, find out about the live shows and the movies and nosafespaces.com and all the good stuff. Drewski. Go to doctor.com, get the family of pods there. Me and Spaz, me and uh, Bob Forrest, check it all out. So, oh, wait, wait, hang on, excuse me. What's up with Dr. Drew Podcast right now? Is it called? Phone call.